सुदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जमुन तीर बन चारी यमुन तीर बन चारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नितानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाध श्री वासादी गोर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्तिस्वूप दामोदर स्वामी नामिने नम सद्भक्तमन मुनिपुर उद्भवाय च प्रभुपादल सद्वाणी प्रचर निरताय ते नम विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती जयपताका स्वामी नामिने नमो आचार्य पदा नितय कृपा प्रदायिने गौरकथा धामदाय नगर ग्राम तारिणे नम विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष सैन्यवादी पश्चत दश तारिणे Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Eighteen, Text Forty Six. The chapter entitled "Prakshit Cars by a Brahmana Boy." <coughs> Please repeat after me. Dharma palo nara patihi, satu samrad brihat sraba. महाभागवत ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद शिला प्रभुपाद की ट्रांसलेशन द एम्पर परीक्षित इज ए पायस किंग इज हाईली सेलिब्रेटेड एंड इज ए फर्स्ट क्लास डिबोटी ऑफ द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड He is a saint amongst royalty, and he has performed many horse sacrifices. When such a king is tired and fatigued, being stricken with hunger and thirst, he does not at all deserve to be cursed. Purport. After explaining the general quotes relating to the royal position, and asserting that the king can do no wrong. and therefore is never to be condemned the sage samika wanted to say something about emperor parikshit specifically <clears throat> the specific qualification of maharaj parikshit is summarized here in the king even calculated the king even calculated as a king only 
was most celebrated as a ruler who administered the religious principles of the royal order. In the Shastras, the duties of all castes and orders of society are prescribed. All the qualities of a Kshatriya mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita were present in the person of the Emperor. He was also a great devotee of the Lord and a self-realized soul. Cursing such a king when he was tired and fatigued with hunger and thirst was not at all proper. Shamika Rishi thus admitted from all sides that Maharaj Parikshit was cursed most unjustly. Although all the Brahmanas are aloof from the incident, still for the childish action of a Brahmana boy, the whole world situation was changed. Thus Rishi Shamika, a Brahmana, took responsibility for all deterioration of the good orders of the world. <coughs> so, I was suddenly asked last night to give English class. <laughs> so, I could not take well preparation. I request for your mercy so that I can say a few words. Today is also disappearance day of Gauridash Pandit and Silarupa Goswami. So first I will briefly try to explain this verse. Then I will try to say something on Gauridash Pandit and Rupa Goswami. So here the speaker is Samiko Rishi. Uh, previous few verses and the following verses also. Uh, Samiko Rishi is the speaker. And Shamiko Rishi, through his speaking and behavior, he is actually setting a very good example of a great saint. Although his son was agitated and disqualified, I mean in one sense, but Shamiko Rishi, the father of Sringi, was very, very qualified. When he first saw the snake, actually, Many other Brahmin saw this incident and they also did not become so much agitated. Otherwise they also could curse. None of the Brahmins present there cursed Maharaj Parikshit except Sringi, the son of Shamik Rishi. So looks like that majority of the Brahmins are qualified. Because Brahmins, they generally, those who are qualified Brahmin, they do not curse so easily. I mean, uh, especially those who are devotee, you know, devotee of the Lord, they can tolerate, uh, they can tolerate offenses because once the cars, their piety is actually destroyed. Uh, if some Brahmin cars someone, his piety is subtracted, <laughs> and if he shows anger, his piety is destroyed. So that's why Brahmins are very careful not to curse anybody or not to kill anybody. They are powerful to kill somebody. Simply by cursing they can kill. But they don't kill because they know if I kill my piety will be subtracted. Uh, just like Vishwamitra Muni, he could kill Taraka Rakshasi. Taraka Rakshasi was disturbing uh, Vishwamitra Muni's uh, sacrifice. But Vishwamitra himself could kill Taraka Rakshasi. He had that much power. And he also knew uh, many mantras uh, of weapons, how to throw weapons with mantra. He, he himself, I mean, taught Ramchandra many weapons, you know. So he was qualified not only as a Brahmin to curse somebody, but also he was qualified to kill somebody with weapons, because he knew many weapons. But still he came to Maharaj um, Dasharath. He came because he knew he already lost his uh, piety two times, you know, before. When Menaka first came, he lost his piety. He fell down and he got ma he married Menaka. Then he realized that I lost my piety. Then again he started um, performing meditation. The next time 
Indra sent Urvashi and when he saw Urvashi he became very angry so much so that Urvashi got burnt so in this way also by showing anger he lost piety so two times he lost his accumulation of piety so that's why he was very careful so he did not want to kill Taraka Rakshashi because he knew if I kill Taraka Rakshashi with my power with my Brahminical power then my power will be reduced so I mean Brahmins qualified Brahmins they very rarely they curse very rarely so here we see Shomik Rishi first of all when he saw the snake what he did he did not become I mean afraid he did not become afraid he just took it indifferently he just threw as if it is something like cloth even if you see a dead snake it is I mean a little disturbing no but Shamik Rishi was not disturbed he did not even ask where from the snake came you know he just threw he came to know from his son that King Parikshit he came here and he was uh, disturbed with hunger and thirst and he was asking for some water but Shamik Rishi was really absorbed in meditation and King Parikshit he sometimes I mean he doubted whether I am I am calling so loudly whether this sage is really in meditation or, or he is just uh, trying to avoid me sometimes if you want to avoid somebody you can also act you can make some drama so King Parikshit as he was a politician he thought little politically that maybe this sage is trying to avoid me because I am Kshatriya I am a lower caste and his Rishi says he is in higher caste so maybe he is trying to avoid me so that's why he is you know acting as if he is absorbed in meditation but I will really see whether he is acting or he is really in meditation so Goswami is explained that it was not Parikshit's fault it was not King Parikshit's fault actually Krishna wanted Krishna wanted that he should commit this, this offense he should commit this mistake so that uh, Bhagavat can come and Bhagavat can appear so this was Krishna's plan whenever a great devotee commits some mistake sometimes Krishna interferes I mean it is Krishna's plan not that it is that great personality's fault sometimes we see Brahma committed mistake sometimes we see Indra, Brahma and great sages also Brihaspati committed great mistake at least in human calculation these mistakes are very great uh, but still uh, because they are in a higher level uh, they cannot be criticized so easily uh, in, in Chaitanya Bhagavat there is a verse when Brahma committed uh, some offense Brahma was attracted to his own daughter so in Chaitanya Bhagavat it is said Ishwarer Saman Brahma Ishwar Saman Mandakarma Kuriliu Mandanohe Tan Lord Brahma is very much empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead so in one sense he is his Gunavatar you know Lord Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu there are three Gunavatars so Lord Brahma is Gunavatar so he is so much empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead even if he commits some mistakes manda karma kurileu manda nahetan but it should not be taken seriously six of his grandson took it seriously and they started laughing at what our grandfather is doing and because they laughed they took I think three three times re rebirth first time a son of Kalanimi second time a son of um, Deboki no Deboki yes and third time a son of uh, Bali Maharaj I mean the six grandsons of Brahma simply because they laughed at Brahma's behavior they got so much punishment when they became sons of Kalanemi they were killed I think by Hiranyakashipu 
they are killed and then they took birth as sons of devaki and they were again killed by kangsha and kalanami became kangsha no <laughs> so that means by own father they are killed next life and then they took birth as sons of bali maharaj and later on when krishna you know rescued them and krishna brought them back to devaki and they had chance to drink devaki's uh, breast milk they became purified by drinking the remnants of the supreme personality of god it so we see even sometimes the great personalities commit some mistakes it should not be taken so seriously because they are empowered by god and sometimes god himself to create some past time sometimes grow god himself you know uh, builders just like arjuna was builded in kurukshetra how come a great devotee like arjuna can become so easily bewildered but krishna wanted that you become bewildered so that i can speak bhagavad gita it is exactly like a drama that's why it is called past time so parikshit maharaj was such a great king in this loka uh, his qualifications are uh, i mean samikrishi is mentioning his qualification samikrishi such a such a great person uh, he was actually uh, offended if some king offers i mean uh, puts a dead snake around uh, his i mean say, uh, says uh, neck around uh, says his neck it is a it is an offense great offense apparently it is a great offense but samikrishi did not take even a slightest offense he thought it is okay it is okay he is only thinking king's great qualification the king is so qualified so we have to learn so nice thing from the behavior of samikrishi and from the mentality of samikrishi uh, what should be the mentality of a great vaishnava what should be the mentality of a great sage uh, sometimes we forget when somebody is committing small mistake uh, we forget his 90% good qualities uh, ordinary people it is okay if you help some ordinary people whole life and maybe sometimes you commit little mistake uh, the person who received unlimited help from you he will criticize you you have this experience no <laughs> in common life even if you help somebody so much but for little mistake they will forget your help kunti devi says if somebody helps you then you should help him if somebody helps you one time you should help him 10 times this should be devotee's mentality and all the time we should never forget the good qualities good contribution of a great personality so maharaj parikshit he has unlimited good qualities he is a mahabhagavat prabhupad used to say that in a good country all the citizens are bhagavat and the king is a mahabhagavat in a good country king is mahabhagavat and ordinary people are bhagavat then there will be peace and prosperity in a kingdom so king parikshit was mahabhagavat and we can understand from his behavior he could counter cars the brahmin boy parikshit maharaj had that much power he was personally favored by the supreme personality of godhead even when he was in the womb of his mother he was personally protected by the supreme personality of godhead so he is not ordinary person he is a very 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 rare person but still uh, although he was very powerful he was so much favored by the supreme personality of godhead and he could counter cars that brahmanical boy the that brahmin boy but still uh, he he did not utter a single word to curse that boy not to counteract that curse he rather thought okay it is my karma so i have to tolerate this we see in the behavior of prahlad maharaj prahlad maharaj was cursed by his father every minutes prahlad maharaj <laughs> he was being cursed by his father every moment you understand cursed and mistreated ill treated but have you heard any cursing word from prahlad maharaj so this is the 
qualification to identify a great devotee. Ah, even among us, there are so many great devotees. I have seen in Bombay. I have seen one devotee <coughs> that one one devotee he started quarrelling with. I, I can tell the name also because it is a good qualification of a devotee. Have you heard the name of Padma Lochan Prabhu? He wrote books also, Padma Lochan Prabhu. He was in Bombay when I was staying in Bombay Temple. So one day, one devotee, not so much, I mean, not old devotee, new devotee, new fight. He started fighting with Padma Lochan Prabhu and he started cursing and um, uh, he was, uh, I mean, uh, speaking so many uh, harsh words to Padmalochan Prabhu. But I saw Padmalochan Prabhu did not say a single word. Uh, so, this is the identification. You can identify a great devotee. Uh, if somebody is ill-treated, but his reaction is very calm and quiet and, I mean, he doesn't take his own offense. Of course, the same person when, if you, if you offend to some other devotee, he will become angry. You know, the great devotee's behavior is like this. They never become angry if you ill-treat with them. But they become angry when you ill-treat other Vaishnava or if you ill-treat, you know, <coughs> Krishna, if you offense, if you commit some offense to Krishna or if you commit some offense to other Vaishnavas, they become like fire. But if you offense, if someone uh, commit offenses to themselves, I mean commit offenses to himself, then he will not become angry. He will tolerate. He will think it is my karma uh, and I deserve this uh, chastisement. Uh, so he doesn't take offense. So here Shamikrishi, although he was greatly offended, but he did not take the offense. Rather, he was thinking positively. So many uh, previous verses also and these verses also. He is only explaining the positive qualification of Parikshit Maharaj. So here, Dharmapalo, you see, he is actually trying to convince his son. Uh, that you see the king is Dharmapalo, he is the protector of religion. Uh, now you have cursed him. Uh, you don't know what kind of mistake, a grievous mistake you have committed. Because for this mistake, coming, uh, I mean, years, millions of years or thousands of years will be affected. For your, this mistake, coming all the years of Kali Yuga will be affected. Because when Parikshit Maharaj left, actually after that Kali Yuga started flourishing like anything. Ah, the speed of Kali Yuga is very, very, very strong. Ah, now I am 62 years old. Within this 62 years old, I have experienced the speed of Kali Yuga. <laughs> I have seen when I was a child, there was only, I am telling about India. I don't know, maybe speed of Kali Yuga in America was much greater. <laughs> and when I was a child, first I saw radio, not television. In my childhood, there was no television. There was no mobile, only radio I saw, radio. So from radio itself, people are affected so much. Before radio, people are absorbed in hearing Krishna Katha, hearing Ramayan, Mahabharat. Uh, in my village I have seen, uh, so many people used to come to visit our, visit our village to just uh, narrate uh, Ramayan, Ramayan, Mahabharat, mainly Ramayan, uh, Ramayan speaker, they used to come. They used to, you know, visit from village to village, house to house, and in any house with little money, they will, uh, you know, narrate about Ramayan. But after radio came, I saw they stopped almost coming. I mean, they stopped coming. They are not coming much. When I was little grown up, uh, radio was there. I saw people are very happy with radio. <laughs> Then when I was student of class 11 or 12, first time I saw television. Ah. When I am student of 11 and 12. So I saw people became absorbed in television. <laughs> slowly, slowly they forgot all these Ramayana, Mahabharata. Ah. Then 
Uh, when I came to university, I saw mobile. <laughs> you understand? So in this way, the speed of Kali Yuga is very quickly with all these modern facilities. Of course, these facilities can be used for Krishna consciousness also. It depends on the user. But majority users are uh, unqualified, disqualified. So they misuse all these things. So anyway, <coughs> uh, this Shamaka Rishi, he is glorifying, glorifying uh, Maharaj Parikshit. Dharmapala is the protector of, protector of religion. Uh, Dharmapala or Narapati. And Narapati, ki, I mean king, is representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Shatu Shakshad Brihasrava. And he is very glorified. He is very much celebrated. Uh, I mean, these things are God's qualification. Jasha. Jasha means... He is uh, glorified everywhere. Uh, so, this king, Parikshit, he is glorified everywhere. And Shakshat Mahan Bhagavata, and he is Mahabhagavata, he is a great devotee. And uh, Rajarshi, although he is a king, but he is a saint, Rajarshi. Uh, monarchy was good, not because there was king, but there was Rajarshi. Rajarshi means Saint taking the position of king, just like uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj, he was Rajarshi, he was a saint, he was like a Sannyasi, but he was taking the position of a king. Uh, Parikshit Maharaj, they are all Rajarshis, Ambarish Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, they are all Rajarshis. There is also, I mean, <coughs> third class king like Ravana, like Ben Maharaj. Uh, they are all disqualified kings. But king is required. Without king, uh, even today we say democracy. What is democracy? It is actually a, a different kind of monarchy. It is a different kind of monarchy. When king is selected by ordinary people, then it is called democracy. Otherwise, king is required everywhere. Even if you see a group of ants, you will see there is a big ant. Have you seen? Among the ants, there is a big ant. If you, go, if you see uh, honeycomb, there is a queen. Queen is there, isn't it? So leader is required. King or queen is required. Uh, so if there is no king, there will be chaotic condition. That's why sometimes even the king is not qualified. Uh, it is better than, it is, they say, a blind uncle is better than no uncle. Without king means all the dacoits and, you know, all the uh, antisocial people, they will disturb. Uh, nobody can uh, live peacefully. Uh, a saintly person cannot live peacefully because all these uh, dacoits and uh, robbers, they will come and they will plunder your property, plunder your wealth. So king is required, especially pious king like Parikshit. So, my dear son, uh, Shamikrishi is addressing his son, that what you have done is a great mistake. Uh, he is such a qualified king, of course he was disturbed by hunger, thirst, and he was uh, disturbed by sunlight. So in this way, he was uh, very much disturbed, so it was our duty to welcome him. Uh, instead of welcoming him, uh, we have not, we, uh, due to some reason, I was absorbed in meditation. But you should not have, you should not have cursed him. That was a great mistake. Nevasta uh, sapamarhati, he doesn't deserve our curse. Uh, so this is the summary of the verse. And now, because time is short, so I would like to narrate something on Goridas Pandit. And if time permits, I will try to narrate something um, on Rupa Goswami. And question answer I will take after, uh, after discussing uh, Goridas Pandit and Rupa Goswami. Okay? So, have you visited Ambika Kalna? How many of you have visited? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you are lucky. <laughs> I visited first time, I think, one month or one and a half month before. First time in my life. 
Ambika Kalna. Ambika Kalna is the house of Gorish, uh, Gorishdas Pandit. His his uh, brother's name was uh, Surjodas Sarkal. Nityananda Prabhu married Surjodas Sarkal's two daughters, Jannaba and Basudha. That is Gorishdas Pandit's, you know, Surjodas Sarkal is Gorishdas Pandit's brother. And Gurudash Pandit was also very much devoted to Nityananda Prabhu. That actually Nityananda Prabhu is gone. I mean, those who served Nityananda Prabhu specially, they are like Nityananda Prabhu's group. So Gurudash Pandit was very much, um, he very much served Nityananda Prabhu and also Nityananda Prabhu favored him so much. So, just before taking Sannash, now, after taking sannyas, they, they visited Ambika Kalna, Goridas Pandit's house, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they stayed there for some days, they are dancing, singing, speaking Harikatha, and they are preaching in the different houses surrounding Goridas Pandit's house. And after some time, Mahaprabhu told, now we have to go to Puri. Because my purpose is to preach, and as I have taken sannyas, I have to go to Puri. So then, Gurudas Pandit told, "No, if you go to Puri, I'll die. I'll automatically die without committing suicide. I'll die." So then, Mahaprabhu tried to convince him, tried to solace him that it is, we have come here to preach. So if I stay in your house then what is the use of my incarnation? Gurudas Pandit was not convinced. You have to stay in my house. Then <laughs> Mahaprabhu told, okay, you make uh, deities of Gaurnitai, you make my deity and my brother's deity, and you worship. Then he says, but deity will not eat like you, deity will not speak like you, deity will not dance like you. The Mahaprabhu said, no. As deity itself, as deity, I'll eat, I'll dance, I'll talk, I'll maintain as if actually I'm non-different from deity. So you will you will realize that deity is non-different from me. So don't worry. Then Gurudas Pandit started arguing with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, if deity is non-different from you, then let deity go for preaching. <laughs> you stay. You directly stay and let these two deities go for preaching. So Mahaprabhu agreed, okay. So both of them jumped on the throne, Singhasan, and they did like this, and immediately they became like wooden deity. Gaurinitai became wooden deity. And the wooden deity became actual Gaurinitai. They started going, you know. <laughs> okay, we go for preaching. We are going to Nilachal. So then Gurudas Pandit was looking at his Singhasan and he saw it is wooden deity and he saw the real Gurunita is going. <laughs> so then he thought I am cheated. So again he started running behind. <laughs> okay, 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 you come, you come. <laughs> what? No, the two deities who are standing in my throne, let them go. Let them go for preaching and you stay. So then they came back and the deity came down from Singhasan and deity started walking and they stood on Singhasan and they were, you know, they again became like wooden. In like this two or three times or four times happened like this, repeatedly. Every time he was little, you know, I mean confused and he exchanged two, three times. After exchanging two, three, try, two, three times, he got puzzled. He forgot. Who was the first one? <laughs> he forgot. Then he surrendered. Okay, what can be done? So that deity is not ordinary deity. Even after Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu left, this deity was speaking with Goridash Pandit. And every day Goridash Pandit was cooking himself so many preparations, so many items. So, one day Mahaprabhu, he thought, this man has become old and now he is cooking so many items. 
I should not give him so much trouble. So one day Mahaprabhu told, I will not eat today. I will not eat. So Gurudash Pandit became upset. Why you will not eat? Because in this advanced age you are cooking so many items. I cannot tolerate this because you are old man and you are cooking so many items. You know, it is very troublesome to you. So Gurudash Pandit became angry. Why you are thinking of my body? I, I feel happy by cooking for you. No, if you cook so many items, I will not eat. So then Gurudash Pandit told, okay, I'll, today I will cook only spinach, shak and one or two items I will cook. So then Mahaprabhu agreed, okay, I will eat. <laughs> so that means even after uh, Nityananda Prabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left, the deities are behaving like, you know, like they are alive, you know, they are speaking, you know, they are not behaving like uh, wooden deities, they are behaving like actual Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, like this, you know. Uh, Gurudash Pandit had a, had a disciple named Ridayananda, Ridayananda. And Ridayananda, he was worshipping the deity. And one day Gurudash Pandit wanted to visit some place, some place outside his village. Then he went out. He told uh, Ridayananda that you take care of the deity. So Ridayananda was taking care of the deity very lovingly. Ridayananda also very great devotee, pure devotee. So he was taking care of the deity very lovingly. But Gurudash Pandit was not returning in time. He was taking longer, you know, many days. He was taking many days. He was not coming back. Ah, it was before Gaur Purnima. Before Gaur Purnima. And I think three or four days left for Gaur Purnima. Still Gurudash Pandit did not come back. <coughs> then the disciple, Ridayananda, he thought, if uh, my Guru Maharaj is not coming back in time, how we will perform, how we will celebrate Gaur Purnima? So then he himself, Ridayananda himself took the responsibility. He wrote many letters to different uh, distinguished guests that on such and such date there will be Gaur Purnima festival. Please come and uh, join us. So at that time, Gurudash Pandit came. So when Gurudash Pandit, actually Gurudash Pandit wanted to test his disciple. So when Gurudash Pandit came, then Ridayananda told, because you are very late, I was a little worried. So I wrote some letters and I sent to some, some of the devotees. So Gurudash Pandit, in his mind he was happy. But externally, to test his disciple, he showed some anger. See, I, I did not die, I am still alive. In my presence you have invited somebody and I don't know who are these guests, whether I wanted to invite them or not. Uh, you just invited, you selected yourself, ignoring my presence. So, this is not good. If you are so interested to, perf to celebrate Gaur Purnima, you go out of my temple and you celebrate Gaur Purnima separately. So then, Ridha Chaitanya, Ridha Ananda, he was trying to convince his Guru Maharaj, asking forgiveness, because you are very late, that's why I, I was feeling some tension. So I just did like this to please you. Oh, no, 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 you are very expert, so you can perform Gaur Purnima separately. So because it is Guru's Adesh, Guru's order, so Ridha Ananda, went, hit, uh, his Guru Maharaj told, you go to bank of Ganga and you perform Guru Purnima there. So Ridha Ananda started, you know, also whatever he collected for Guru Purnima, for Guru Pandit, Guru, Guru Pandit told, I don't accept your collection, you take all the collection and you perform Guru Purnima separately near Ganga. So he, being ordered by his Guru Maharaj, he took all the collection and he went near Ganga and he started celebrating Gaur Purnima. And what happened, on the day of Gaur Purnima, there was another disciple who was worshipping that Gaur deity and he found there is no Gaur in the temple. <laughs> so he informed his Guru Maharaj, there is no Gaur in the temple. What happened? Then Gurudash Pandit, he took a stick <laughs> and he started running. 
and he doubted maybe gornita is with ridananda uh, so he came near ganga and he saw gornita is dancing with ridananda you know so then gornita became became afraid you know see gornita became afraid hey she gurudas pandit has come with stick so suddenly they jumped and entered into ridananda's heart so gurudas pandit saw saw gornita jumped and entered into ridayananda's heart then he became surprised and he understood that my disciple ridayananda is a very great devotee so he embraced ridayananda and he was crying and he told from today your name is no more ridayananda your name is from today riday chaitanya because chaitanya mahaprabhu entered into your riday means heart so from today your name is riday chaitanya so then after that incident he came back to his temple and he saw gornita is standing in the temple <laughs> so gurudas pandit he became little afraid because uh, he thought uh, my gornita is very special and if some special devotee comes and take darshan of gornita as it happened with riday chaitanya that gornita left the temple so he became so much afraid that even for darshan if you go for darshan they allow for few seconds or minute not minute i i, I saw i think few seconds they open you just see uh, before you see completely they close they close you understand so if you ask pujari that why they do like this they say because it already ran one or two times <laughs> he already ran with the bodies so this gornita is very attractive actually very beautiful i have seen that gornita is very beautifully you know his very beautiful face and very beautiful dress you know really attractive gornita so if any devotee takes darshan for say longer time that gornita may uh, leap temple so that's why goridas pandit was so much cautious and so much afraid and that's why he never allowed to have darshan for longer long time and still today the present pujari is also they don't allow you to see for long time few seconds they will so show and they will close the door uh, i have seen on the door also there is black spot black spot of the hand a pujari because pujari is opening and closing opening and closing that place became completely black <laughs> where he is touching the pujari is touching uh, i mean whenever the temple is open it is like this pujari is busy with opening the door and closing the door you understand <coughs> so uh, if you go there it is not very far it is not very far our prabhu is there he is conducting some tour no you <laughs> so if you go there you can find a bhagavad gita written by chaitanya mahaprabhu himself his own handwriting i saw that handwriting mahaprabhu's handwriting handwriting of god ah it is much more beautiful than any printing any printing ah day before yesterday i saw the handwriting of krishna das kaviraj goswami in his house i had the good fortune to visit krishna das kaviraj goswami's house and his hand handwriting is still there is so beautiful much beautiful than any printing and mahaprabhu's handwriting was uh, i have seen it is much more beautiful uh, in guridas pandit's house uh, the, if you ask pujari they can show and there is also one what is called boitha with which the boatman you know the row the boat uh, that boitha wooden wooden boitha is there mahaprabhu himself was uh, rowing some boat and he came to guridas pandit's house and he gifted this uh, boitha to guridas pandit and told with this boitha you take all the living entities of this world to golak vrindavan <laughs> so that boitha you can see and bhagavad gita written by written by chaitanya mahaprabhu he was just he just copied chaitanya mahaprabhu just copied uh, so that bhagavad gita you can see so you take opportunities uh, so that you can visit goridas pandit's house and have jhalak darshan jhalak darshan means you see for a jhalak jhalak means f- 
fraction of you know second or fraction of minute uh, is called jhalak so you can take jhalak darshan and take some blessing uh, from that gornitai special gornitai uh, worship by goridas pandit himself and you know the history of this gornitai that how deity is non different from god uh, people say that deity your deity sometimes they fell from hand and they break so how god can break he cannot protect himself but it depends on the caliber of devotee if a devotee is like goridas pandit or pralad maharaj the deity can speak deity can do anything but a, a disqualified for a disqualified person it can also fall from hand ah sometimes it happens ah that one day gornitai fell down from the altar fell down suddenly due to some mistake and it was found that there was some offense committed by the pujari you understand even even uh, one time 30 dacoits attacked our radhamadav you know that 30 dacoits attacked our radhamadav and it was found that i mean i heard from his grace pankajangri prabhu that at that time pujari was committing some serious offense you understand so uh, yes dt can fall from your hand dt can break dt can be stolen if the pujari is disqualified or the related devotees those who are involved in dt worship if they are disqualified if they commit some offense even secretly dt can behave like this and if devotee is like goridas pandit or devotee is like pralad maharaj or gadadhar pandit you know the deities perform so many wonderful pastimes so je jatha mang prapaddante tang stathiva bhajam maham what is the time now prabhu i cannot see from here due to reflection ha huh? 5 minutes so i have to keep some time for question answer rupagashami about rupagashami all of you know um, very nice uh, stories if you visit ramkili how many of you how many of you have visited ramkili okay one two so this tourism department should take much more i mean uh, <laughs> initiative to and uh, increase this number of visitors to ramkili and to all the places where chetana mahaprabhu's uh, chetana mahaprabhu himself performed many pastimes and his devotees performed many wonderful pastimes Ah, if you visit those places, you get special mercy, and also when you read books after visiting those places, then this becomes very graphical in your in your mind. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, if you have any question or comment, uh, please ask question or comment. Or if you want to correct some mistake, you can also you are welcome to correct mistakes. <coughs> hmm. Ah. Ah. Gurudev Pandit was one of the 12 shakha of Vrindavan. Shubal shakha. And uh, we visited Uddharandatta's house. He is also one of the 12 shakhas. Ah. I think Uddharan was Shubahu something. And uh, Gurudev Pandit was Shubal shakha. Yeah, from Dapur Yoga. Any, uh, thank you for the comment. Any other, any other comment or question? Okay, Prabhuji. How did Rupa Goswami give up all his property and? I, I could not follow the question. How did Rupa Goswami give up property and wealth and and? Uh, facilities everybody wants pro money and property so who, who, who got property and wealth rupa goswami, rupa goswami. Be, how, how did he live, no he was not before that? before rupa goswami was not rupa goswami he was a very qualified person uh, so much qualified that one astrologer told uh, hushan shah a muslim king 
that if you can appoint uh, Rupa and Sanatan, these two brothers, as your minister, your kingdom will prosper. So then uh, Hushan Shah invited Rupa Goswami and Sanatan. At that time they were not known as Goswami. So Hushan Shah invited them and asked them to become minister. He asked Sanatan Goswami to become prime minister and Rupa Goswami to become finance minister. So they denied. They told, no, no, we are not interested because they are not interested to serve under a Muslim government. But because Hushan Shah was very cruel, cruel king, you know, so he forced, no, you must become my minister. So actually Hushan Shah forced them to become minister. But although he forced, he gave nice salary, he gave a um, lot of land, so much land, good quarters, house, everything he gave. So from Hushan Shah, he, they became rich. You understand? Otherwise, they were not interested to become minister. You understand? But later on, when Rupa Goswami left this service, then he distributed his wealth. I think 50% uh, uh, he kept for, uh, he distributed to the Brahmins and Vaishnavas. Other 25% uh, he distributed to the relatives. And other 25 percent he kept for emer emergency. So this was the standard established by Rupa Goswami, how to utilize uh, wealth uh, at the end of your life. <laughs> is, is it clear Prabhu, your question? Okay, Hare Krishna. Any other? Ah, Mataji. Mataji will ask one question, it is compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> such nice points. Such nice points. Uh, you just mentioned about distribution of the wealth. I've personally seen my grandparents from both sides of family that at the end of life, they actually built temples. After earning so much wealth all, uh, all their life, they save, then they go to the holy places and they erect some small temples. So it's a common thing, but just present generation has not taken that notice. Yeah, yeah. Even some of Srila Prabhupada's disciple, like Satsarup Maharaj, he was serving in some college or university and whatever salary he used to get, 100% he used to hand over to Srila Prabhupada. Complete salary he was giving to Srila Prabhupada. And he was, I mean, taking prasadam in the temple. So in this way, uh, he did not care for his own maintenance. He was giving everything to Srila Prabhupada. So it depends on the mentality and consciousness of a devotee. The more you are advanced, the more easily you can give up your position. Thank you, Mataji. <laughs> so can I stop here? Okay. Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Sila Goridas Pandit ki, Sila Rupa Goswami ki, Samabhata Vaishnav Bhakta Vrinda ki, Nitai Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari Bhav.